Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Dr. Ramel from CT Skin Clinic and today I thought we'd have a little chat about acne scarring and the best treatments for acne scarring. Now this video um, is going to focus on a particular type of acne scarring, so atrophic or inverted acne scars and I'm going to really mostly focus on non-surgical treatments. Um, we'll do in the future a, a video about treating hypertrophic or kind of uh, thickened and kind of overgrown acne scarring. We'll also do videos on keloid scarring um, be, uh, separately because I think these subjects deserve their own attention and focus because uh, they're also really important and the treatments do differ. The reason I'm focusing on non-surgical acne scarring is mainly because that's the most uh, common way to treat these and at the end I'll briefly go through a little bit of what sur surgical uh, treatments may involve um, but that's another subject for another video. So uh, before we continue, if you are enjoying our content and you haven't uh, yet done so, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, give this video a thumbs up at the end if you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you. So acne scarring, I think we've kind of in previous videos, I've spoken about acne and the process behind acne. Now, Acne scarring is something that I call as a, an after effect of acne. It's what happens when you have the acne and you have the pimples and then these kind of um, blow up um, and once they, so in a way it almost becomes a wound uh, once pimples pop or once they resolve and that wound starts to heal and like uh, any kind of open wound, healing can occur by scarring in that situation. So. Um, when uh, we have acne scarring, um, we might also have hyperpigmentation as well. That's very common, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So you can be left with areas of dark patches of skin where the uh, breakouts were and also a scar as well. Problem with scars is they don't then go away by themselves and that's why acne scarring is quite difficult to heal um, and there's a lot of interest around it. But there are, the good news is there are a lot of things that can help and the best treatment as always uh, depends on what type of scarring you have, how long it's been there for um, and it's important to understand acne and acne scars are a long process. Uh, it doesn't just come up overnight and then disappear by itself and in the same way um, it's important to be patient with treatments if you are undergoing a course of treatment to persevere with it and you know if it's the right treatment you will see some results. So with acne scarring, I'm just going to quickly kind of uh, divide that into, like I mentioned, atrophic scars. And these are scars that go inwards. Um, and in that category, you get things like box car scars, um, ice pick scars or rolling scars. And these are the most commonly referred terms. Um, and the reason that they're given different names is because sometimes it does affect the treatments uh, that are best for them. Um, and also it does affect the overall appearance and distribution. Most people will have a mixture of these scars, particularly in severe acne scarring. Hypertrophic scars, so these are scars that rather than going inwards, they go upwards. So you see them as bumps and nodules on the face and if they extend beyond the margin of the scar, they may end up, you may end up with keloid scars, which are far bigger and spread out more than the initial scar itself. Um, these two types of scars, you can get them across all skin tones, but uh, people with um, medium and darker skin tones are particularly more prone to them, and especially keloid scarring. And so there is a difference in the treatments of these, and like I mentioned, I'll do another video talking about it, because with hypertrophic and keloid scars, the treatment does differ from atrophic scarring. And some of the treatments for atrophic scarring can worsen hypertrophic scars. So with all of this, um, if you have acne scarring, it's really important to go and see a, a specialist and a professional um, doctor 
who can actually uh, um, look at your scars and assess what type they are and what would be the best treatment for them and also help you avoid things and making them worse. It's obvious um, that the best way to reduce acne scarring is actually to firstly get on top of and control the acne itself to avoid further scars from happening and to avoid things like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and I will leave a link at the end of this video to our acne treatments video because that's a really important place to start. Once you have control of the acne and you've cleared it, that's a good time to focus on treating scars that are already there. So um, there are a few at home treatments that work well and help with acne scarring and also mention the non-surgical um, treatments that could also help. Um, at home stuff that you should be looking for, luckily there's a lot of cross uh, overlap with acne itself. Um, acne treatment itself, so um, retinol for example is uh, in the form of a serum or a cream at night is absolutely essential. It will help with smoothing the texture of the skin, reducing the appearance of scars, but also retinol will help with if there's any hyperpigmentation, so it will help with evening out the skin tone. Tretinoin, which is a prescription retinoid, is even more effective than retinol and so it's something that, again, like retinol, is useful in acne but also helpful in treating acne scarring itself and both of these uh, also happen to be really good in terms of treating uh, skin aging and improving the appearance of lines and wrinkles, which is an added bonus. Exfoliants, um, so alpha hydroxy acids, particularly glycolic acid, and if you're using this at home in the form of a toner, it are really good for, again, smoothing the skin. And these can help with reducing the appearance of scars. They won't get rid of them completely, but it can help with that. And it can also, again, help with hyperpigmentation. Um, glycolic acid is fantastic and you can use it as a toner. So there are things like the Pixi Glow Toner with, um, or the Ordinary have a daily toner and both of these are safe to use. Um, but don't forget um, to always do a patch test and particularly if you are someone who has a medium or deeper coloured skin because of just of the risk of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Um, so that's alpha hydroxy acids. If you're someone with sensitive skin or if you are someone prone to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and you don't want to risk using glycolic acid, then you can try something like lactic acid, which is gentler. Um, malic acid or mandelic acid are also uh, gentler acids. Um, always don't forget to try and uh, try it out as a patch test in an area that's not obvious um, and make sure that your skin doesn't react to it. So uh, again, there are a lot of um, brands that do these um, as toners um, or as masks and you can get uh, some solutions that are low uh, concentration, low strength and safe to use at home. If you go with a reputable brand, something like The Ordinary again, quite have a wide variety of these things. Um, other um, uh, things that can help, azelic acid is something that can also help with skin texture and that in a low concentration can be found over the counter or yeah, as a prescription for a higher strength um, like tretinoin. And these products are safe to use with each other but it's important to try them out and start slowly before you build them up just so that you don't irritate your skin too much. If you find that your skin is feeling dry or tight or a little bit irritated, you can uh, stop using them for a few days or a few nights and then reintroduce them again gently. Um, other treatments that also will help with just improving in, uh, skin uh, quality and um, also with the bounciness of the skin um, are things like vitamin C and that's quite a good ingredient to use, a skincare ingredient to use especially in the mornings um, and whilst that's not going to address the acne scars directly it will improve the quality of the skin. So in terms of professional skin treatments these are obviously 
um, really good to consider, particularly if you have extensive scarring um, and also if you want treatments that can kind of work um, a little bit faster and at uh, greater depth. So whilst over-the-counter skincare will be um, will be good at treating mild cases, it might not be enough for kind of moderate or severe cases of scarring. One of the most uh, popular things obviously um, is chemical peels and again things like either the TCA cross peel um, that's good for targeting scars on their own um, or you can have um, chemical peels, higher strength glycolic peels for example, um, that will target the acne scarring and the surrounding skin. Again, if you go to a clinic and see a medical professional, they'll be able to help you select the best peels for your condition. And don't forget, peels or any of the treatments that I'm going to mention are usually required as um, a course of treatment um, because you need to use them and give the skin time to regenerate and improve and then keep using them for a course of treatment normally at least three courses um, on average it's usually three to five some people need much more than that and it's really about getting you know committing to that um, like with skincare it's important to see this as a course of treatment and as an investment in your skin um, and not to sort of give up after a single treatment because there is a path and a journey there. Um, microneedling is another fantastic treatment uh, because it stimulates uh, collagen, new collagen production um, and in a way helps lift up these scars. At our clinic we uh, combine microneedling with chemical peels for all of our microneedling treatments um, and we do that because the rationale is that the chemical peel removes kind of the outer layers um, of dead skin and that allows the microneedling to work, uh, get its way, make its way deeper into the skin and work all the way down um, to the scars and that's particularly useful for things like pick scars. Laser therapy is also very useful and laser, depending on the type of laser, can work in the same way as chemical peels and microneedling as well. Um, laser treatment has a greater downtime usually than medical uh, chemical peels and microneedling so it's something worth thinking about. Other um, in-clinic treatments can be for, and this is for larger scars, um, things like dermal fillers can be used to help lift up really deep scars. Um, also, um, treatments like Profilo can help stimulate the skin and improve the appearance of scars and very textured acne prone skin. Again, which of these treatments, whether alone or on, in combination with each other, um, and also in the context of a skincare routine, all of these are um, very personalized and they depend on the extensiveness of your acne scarring, your expectations, um, lifestyle, budget, all of those things should be taken into consideration so that you can find the best treatment for your needs. Really those are the main non-surgical at home and in clinic treatments for acne scarring. Um, there are also, of course, uh, surgical treatments for acne scarring. I'm not going to mention them in detail here, but thing, uh, surgical treatment may be useful if you've tried uh, non-surgical treatments and either they've not worked or they have worked but um, not as, as, as well as you would like. Um, there are also very severe cases of acne scarring where perhaps it makes sense to go towards surgical uh, treatments um, a lot sooner um, than, uh, than just trying with non-surgical treatments. And so all of that will really depend on you uh, getting expert advice. Um, surgical treatments can range from uh, usually, in, um, they may involve just um, removing, cutting out these scars um, or uh, you know disrupting the scar tissue itself um, and again I'm happy to do a video that explains this in more detail um, let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in um, covering the surgical um, approach to this 
Um, and then, of course, for people, as I mentioned, with hypertrophic scarring, that's a whole other issue, and I'll mention that in another video. Let me know if you've had experience with acne scarring and if any of these treatments have worked for you or haven't worked. Um, if you have any questions at all, don't forget to check out the links below to our acne and acne scarring pages as well as hyperpigmentation, um, and check out the rest of our videos on skincare and skin health. Um, Please uh, subscribe to this channel, uh, push the notification bell so that you are uh, notified whenever there's a new video and give this video a thumbs up. Until next time.